A Cambridge scientist thinks he has discovered alien life. What? Let's find out what this is all about, y'all. If you're new to the channel and you like content like this, please hit that subscribe button. I put out a new video every day, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. I do not miss a day. Now, please hit that like button, betters. That really helps out the videos. So thank you all so much for the support there. And of course, comment down below. What do you think about this discovery? I know some of you have, um, quite a few of you have brought it up in the comments and wanted me to cover it. So here we are. Let's take a look. I got two clips we're going to look at. Okay. One is the clip it's about and another one just for context. Let's go, y'all. All right. First one is this clip right here. Okay. It's from a channel called LBC out of the UK. And um, this video has already 3 million views in seven days, y'all. Okay. So a lot of people are talking about this. Let's just get it going. This is the story of the week for me, this. Imagine being Professor Niku. Professor Niku is an astrophysicist at Cambridge University. Picture the scene. Professor Niku is quietly studying the data gathered on yet another exoplanet, discovered some unfathomably far distance away from Earth. And as Professor Niku stares at the data of yet another exoplanet in yet another solar system, they notice something. This is where the suspenseful music would come in during the Netflix episode of this discovery. The professor stares harder at the data. It can't be, he says. Is it life? The James Webb Space Telescope is set to turn its gaze towards a distant planet, K218b in another solar system, to investigate one of the most tantalizing hints of alien life ever discovered. This, folks, could be it. And our protagonist, the scientist who may have discovered life out there in the universe is Professor Niku Madus Madusudan, Professor of Astrophysics and Exoplanetary Science at the University of Cambridge, who joins me live. Thank you very much indeed for coming on the program. Um, right, we've, we, I think we've got, the de we've got the deeds to your life story sewn up here. We, we now own the rights to this. Um, tell us where and when you found this. So last year, uh, we had uh, some JWST observations with the James Webb Space Telescope of this planet, uh, its atmosphere, and we detected for the first time ever carbon-bearing molecules like methane and CO2 uh, in its atmosphere and did not detect other molecules like ammonia, which said that it should, it's likely to have an ocean uh, underneath the atmosphere. But we also saw a tentative sign of this molecule dimethyl sulfide, which we weren't sure but still, even the very possibility of it being there is enormous. So this is this is dimethyl sulfide. Yeah, that's that's the important gas. And why is that gas yeah. so important? It's important because uh, on Earth it is produced only from life, uh, only um, mainly from microorganisms in the Earth's oceans, and it has been. Uh, known to be a robust biomarker if detected in planetary environments. And it had been predicted uh, to be so, and we had been looking for it. And, and that's why it's super important. How much of it is there? Can you tell? So we are not 100% sure yet. It could be anywhere of the order of a part per million. Um, so Is that a lot? But, but it, it's a lot for that particular gas. On, right. on Earth, it would be like significantly lower than that. Oh, really? So on, we actually have lower amounts of dimethyl sulfide on Earth than could be present on this particular planet. Wow. Absolutely, yeah. Wow. Um, and what I love is your description, as I've read it, Professor, in one of the newspapers today, of when you found this, when you realised that the, the this gas might be present there. So talk, talk us through that. No, it's... Real quick, that is interesting. Right, that there's more of that particular molecule or gas, DMS as they're calling it, there's more of it there on that exoplanet than we have on Earth. And this gas only comes from life. What? <laughs> this is crazy. Which, this kind of already been out in the news. Some of you may have already heard about this. I actually made a video about it at the beginning of the year. Um... So it's kind of been out there, but it's still floating around, right? It's still, it's still exciting to me. It's a profound activity, this uh, search for biomarkers elsewhere, because the ramifications to society are enormous. So even if we detect the molecule, uh, we have to be really, really sure that it's there 
and we have to be really sure it's from life uh, on another planet. There are many false positives that can happen. Uh, but the prospect of that being there has enormous ramifications because the search for life elsewhere has been one of the uh, longest standing uh, quest of of our species, of humankind. Uh, so if this is when it's going to come true finally, that's a momentous occasion and we don't take it lightly. So we, I, yeah. I read that you couldn't sleep for a week. Is that right? Yeah, that is correct. So wow. for, a, for a week, because it, it, it hits you hard when, when uh, you see the possibility of such a big, uh, big discovery. It, it, for, a, for a scientist, um, it's, it's quite enormous. This planet is quite big as well, isn't it? Is, the, is it two and a half times the size of Earth, something like that? That's correct, yes. Yeah. And you think that because this gas exists, the presence of water is there, oceans are there, and therefore the life that would be giving off this gas will be residing somewhere on some uh, faraway planet's ocean floor. Yeah, the evidence for the oceans comes from other gases that we have actually detected robustly, the methane and carbon dioxide, and we did not detect ammonia. That combination tells us that it's very, it very likely has an ocean. We need more observations to confirm that, but, but the ocean narrative is very much possible. And then if we detect this gas, it, you put all of these uh, components together, says that you know, there, are, there could be microorganisms on an ocean world elsewhere. Dumb question, Professor. So you make this discovery, you see this in the data, you think, oh, my God, who do you ring? Who do you tell? How do you, how do you, so what, what chain is there to make, get this to the top of the chain to say, guys, I think I've discovered life? Well, it took me about a week to muster the courage to even think that that's anywhere close to real and break it to my own group, my own students working <laughs> with me. So, so you don't drink anyone, you're just shell-shocked for a while. And then we slowly all come together and work on it for many more months uh, before, uh, weeks and months before we robustly establish it and then you, you publish it and so on. And to the extent that the James Webb Telescope is what, as we speak, looking at this particular exoplanet K218b to see what images it can get of it. Yeah, it just happened this morning, actually. So so it has already done it uh, early this morning. Uh, so we have the observations. They're beaming um, uh, in right now. Uh, so we're waiting for the data to come to us. And the analysis will start anytime now. Wow. That's amazing. So that is what's different about the story now, right? So when we covered at the beginning of the year, um, that... Uh, that part hadn't happened, right? So now the James Webb Telescope, between then and now, right, they have pointed it at this planet. They are taking, I guess, photographs or imagery, sending that data has been beamed back, is being beamed back, um, which this, this video was put out seven days ago. So for the last week, they have been receiving this data, and now they have to interpret that data. And we could, we are going to get some pictures of what this planet looks like. And that's exciting. I'm not going to lie. Is it going to look like Earth? It's two and a half times the size of Earth, which is nuts. Wow. So you could, how long is it going to take to fully analyze this? So, so we will obviously take our time to do very careful analysis. So it's going to be months before uh, we can say anything uh, for sure. Wow. What do you put the chances of having found life? At this stage, I would say 50-50. Wow, that high? Wow. I, I, yeah, I mean, that's purely going by what the data has been telling us in the past and what, uh, what we know from theory. Uh, it, it could be 50-50. It is very high, I know, uh, wow. but, but that's, that's what the is, data says. Is. Again, dumb question, but I think, you know, context matters here. Is that, have there been other situations, other discoveries where they've said, right, we think this is 50-50, we think this is about as close as we've ever been to discovering it? Not on an exoplanet, never. Not a planet outside the solar system. That's incredible. Wow. I think, Professor, you, you are a couple of months away from being perhaps the most famous person in the world. <laughs> well, um, I mean... I would like to find what the truth is, and I will leave it there. Um, and that, that's my number one duty here. Um, and, and we'll see how it turns out. Good man. Well, listen, yes, as man. and when you've got the information in, as and when you think you're, you're ready to go, could one of the calls please be to us, just so we can have first dibs on telling the world that we've 
that you've discovered life out there? So I, I, I will say that it won't come so easy in the sense that we won't get a detection of life with one other observation. It'll probably take us closer to truth, and then that'll set off uh, in motion a number of other studies, theoretical and observational. And you know, like like all uh, good science, uh, it'll be gradual. It'll not be like an immediate um, immediate result. But every step that takes us closer to truth is a huge step forward, and that's what I'm looking forward to. So maybe not this observation, uh, an ironclad result, but maybe in a few maybe, I don't know, maybe in a month, in a few months, maybe in a year, it, it could come anytime. Well, you're not going to get much sleep, I think. It, it, I hope it comes sooner rather than later, because you're going to need to get some kip. Because um, having to be being having those sleepless nights for a year is going to be a problem. Yeah, so we are used to these operations uh, at the, the cutting edge. So I think we'll survive. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Fantastic to talk to you. Congratulations to you and your team. Absolutely fascinating. Professor Niku Madhusudan, Professor of Astrophysics and Exoplanetary Science at the University of Cambridge, who is leading this study into this planet K218b. It is a an exoplanet in orbit around a red dwarf star called K218. If you wanted it to be belt and braces, I mean, that is... Come on. Imagine that. Put the radio on one afternoon. You're listening to this bloke wittering on. And the, the show stops and you go, just going to break the news to you. Do you remember that guy that we spoke to a couple of months back? The, the, the Cambridge side? He's done it. He's found life. out. We found life, our proper life. Not your little tiddly billy bits, but, the, you know, proper, proper life in the universe. Wow. Incredible. It's pretty exciting. All right. So, so that's the thing. It's K218 is the red dwarf star. Um, the planet, the exoplanet K218b, right, is the name of the planet. Um, twi again, two and a half times the size of Earth. James Webb's telescope is beaming back data about the planet. Um, and yeah, you know, who knows if there is going to be a press conference, um, you know, this definitive statement, or it's just going to be like the other guy said, right? that will put in motion more studies, more, right, to, to really confirm this. So honestly, it sounds like it could take anywhere from a couple months to a couple years to really get a, a better answer that I think the public would more want to accept, All right? Because that's what the public's looking for. Did you find it or not? Not this nuanced answer. Now, a lot of you watching and myself included can appreciate the nuance of this um, so I think it's exciting, regardless of how you feel about the phenomenon here on Earth, it's flying around, whatever, all this stuff. This is also exciting, right? Th this is also exciting um, as well. So, wow. I don't know. I, I mean, I just, uh, that excites me. I think that's, that's so cool. All right, let's go to the next clip here, just for a little context. This is a channel called Anton Petrov. And um, he's going to talk a little bit um, about this K218b, okay, and the DMS detection. So that's what they detected, DMS. And again, that only is a byproduct, a biomarker of life, at least as we know it on Earth, right? And this planet has more than we would see on Earth even. So just keep that in mind. But I thought it'd be interesting to get another perspective um, about this. So let's listen. Again, links in the description. Check it out for yourself. Terrestrial in nature, containing additional molecules such as CO2. But the question is, of course, could this planet be terrestrial? Right now, this wasn't really clear. And the other question was DMS, or that dimethyl sulfite. The 2023 detection was not really a detection as much as it was just a hint. As we've discussed in that previous video, here the detection value was extremely low and practically insignificant, and so the fact that the authors even mentioned it was maybe just for attention, to be honest, it didn't really make sense. And so most scientists kind of ignored DMS as even being in the atmosphere. It could actually have been something entirely different. Kind of similar to what happened with Venus and the phosphine detection, which turned out to be maybe not a detection. But anyway, a much more important study, and I guess a much more important detection, comes from something else from a few months ago in regards to a different planet. A planet that you see right here known as WASP-80b. Here, extremely recently, using very similar observations, 
methane was also discovered in pretty much the same amounts. And that's of course something that is expected. But this planet is a gas giant, as you can see right here. Yet it's orbiting a very similar type of a star, as in K2-18b system, with even very similar age. But intriguingly here, there was also a clear evidence of not just methane, but also once again water. Yet it's not a rocky planet, so methane cannot be explained with things like serpentinization, and water can probably not be explained with an ocean. Yet everything else about this planet, in terms of detections, was extremely similar to what we just saw on K2-18b. Ok, no DMS, no dimethyl sulfide, but definitely water, definitely methane. Which actually led to more discoveries about K2-18b as well. Now, just as a reminder, this is not an Earth-like planet. This is maybe a super-Earth, or maybe... So anyway, he's, he's talking about another planet, right? He's saying that the um, DMS that they detected was insignificant. He's not sure why the author published it, uh, which is the other guy that we just showed. Um, but according to the other guy, it has more than Earth would have. So I don't know. That's an odd distinction, right? Like that does seem like something you would report then if it's more than Earth. All right. So look, that's the thing. When you look this up online and you start hearing from other people about this, scientists, um, creators, whatever, you hear all these different opinions about it, right? So I don't know. And, you know, he goes on to talk about another planet that's also interesting. So... I think at our minimal uh, ability, right, for observation, which granted, again, we have literally just started doing this, right? It, it hasn't been that long before we were able to have these techniques. I mean, a blink of an eye in our existence. Just imagine where we're going to be in a couple hundred years or a thousand or whatever, being able to understand what's around us a lot more. That's exciting. And, you know... How does this come into play with the phenomena as we know it on planet Earth, right? That is interesting. Would that change our the way we study things if we were to get disclosure, right? Um, I guess all of science would change. Like, why do we need to point the telescopes out? We can point in. Well, not the telescopes, but you know what I mean, right? Would we be as interested as in what's out there? If we find out we do have crash craft and bodies and, you know, we're interacting with these entities here on Earth, does that take away our desire, our curiosity um, to search out there in space? I don't know. That's interesting, right? Something to think about. So, look, I don't know. What do y'all think? K218B? Does that seem exciting to y'all? Um, I am going to stay on top of it. Um, I mean, look, to be honest, there were a lot of comments about it. People did want to know about this and want to cover this. And clearly, the public wants to know about this. Mainstream media wants to know about this, right? So, look, we'll stay on top of it. We'll keep reporting on this as it goes. So, um, don't forget, join me in the Discord after party right after this, okay? Right after the live premiere only. Okay, head over to Discord. Link will be in the description. I'm going to be hanging out there for about 15 to 30 minutes uh, in the Discord. Yesterday's was awesome. Went great. Um, so, you know, come join us. It's just a party. <laughs> like I said, the after party where we're going to talk more about this, right? Um, and you can ask me questions directly about anything you want. So, uh, try to keep it on topic with this video, but whatever, you know, it is what it is. Let's just go hang out. So anyway, I'll see you guys in the discord after party again, only after the live premiere here. So if you're watching this later, I won't be in the discord afterwards. Okay. So anyway, link in the description, link in the live chat as well, and link in a pinned comment at the top of this video. Either way, join the discord and be ready for that, uh, at any time. Okay. So all right, guys, we'll see you guys on um, tomorrow's video. All right, remember, every day's a gift, y'all.